Hello, everybody. Welcome back to Noise Every Day. That's right. We're back at it again. This time, I have... I went to sleep slightly earlier. Right. We're fully prepared today for my brain to not explode. I know. Shocker. Uh, I'm a little bit refreshed. I've got a decent amount of energy in my, in my being. I consumed caffeine earlier today, and it may still be late, but it has not fully faded yet, I don't think. Which is surprising, because it was quite a while ago. Maybe maybe I'm just not tired anymore for no good reason. Sometimes that just happens. Now, right now we have a semi-decent wand where we're trying to locate ourselves some uh, relatively useful materials. The main way we were planning on doing that was using some Intaka Suava plus some of the random spells we have on hand, which should do pretty good for us, as long as I did everything correctly. And since we have unlimited spells, that should be relatively easy to do. It's a very good thing that we have a laser beam along with us as well. Possessed wand ally. Alright, we can check around this area. I, there aren't going to be many resources we can make use of, but, you know, it's still worth looking around, just in case we get really, really lucky with, like, a... What's what's it called? Oh, frick. Which, what's that potion named? Ambrosia. The best... Among the best materials to obtain in the game. Okay. You guys really want to challenge me here, don't you? Wrong decision, I would say. I have become impervious to fearing you. There's just an alchemist here? Okay, uh, I need to get past him somehow. Whilst retaining all of his crap, because I would love to gain access to some of those potions over there, because I'm pretty dang sure that there's going to be an ambrosia of some kind. <coughs> And, uh, if not, womp womp, but, you know, it's a pretty high chance, so we might as well look. Hey, my guesstimation was correct. Free Brosia. I can't remember if we did- no, we did, we did do teleportation, I'm sure of it now. We used Tele inside of the thing to get ourselves some free resources. In the eye room, of course. Uh, should be safe to go to the Holy Mountain. Pretty sure we did collapse this one. If not, that'd be awesome, but, uh, but yeah, we did. Which is fine, we can just walk past. The gods are enraged, but there's only one big boy, Scott, so not too much to worry about. I just love having massive builds. It's so awesome. Hopefully we can find a teleport. Just need to get to one of the holy mountains that allows us to, uh, what's it called? I don't know. Freaking wand edit, right. Mal, the words just leave my body instantly. Uh, we did not get unlimited wand editing, unfortunately. Tinker with wands everywhere has evaded us. I can't believe I parried that red. I'm sure we'll get something along that line at some point, though. Shouldn't take too long, considering this is a very good run at this point. Can we, since we have healing, we have a lot of the necessary resources to make it continue forward. Hey, there's just an alchemist here. Um... I'm going to leave you be, as long as you don't try to kill me. Still not a usable mountain, but again, we can check the wands to see if there's anything useful. Since I don't think there is, there is not. Womp womp. By the by, a deadly heal is actually statistically better than our good friend Circle of Vigor, simply because of the way that it functions. Uh, if you use Piercing and Null Shot, you can completely nullify the damage from it, no matter what. Which means that even if something like, let's say, Hungry Ghost was to add damage to it, it shouldn't damage you. Now, I say that shouldn't because I'm almost certain that that's the case. There's a very tiny chance that it is not, but I am almost certain- holy frick, 50 free hit points? This seed is nuts. We have 420 max HP, that's crazy good. Uh-oh. An immortal tank, you say. Well, I say it's dead now, so it doesn't matter. And also that my shield is impeccable and you can't do crap about it. Uh, we could set up this quest. Oh. Where's- which part's the goober? I accidentally destroyed the statue so it can't work. That's really unfortunate. Well, we'll have to find the summon portal elsewhere. And, uh, it will be necessary. Unless we can find the end of everything in one of the big shops. Sky shops, whatever. Because, unfortunately, it only has a couple guaranteed spots. Ooh, rune stub emptiness is nuts. Uh, I'm going to leave that there, though, because I have pheromone. 
Uh, we're gonna want runes to have emptiness later. I think we can use it in the Komi fight if we get into 34 orb Komi way later in the run. Like, super far in the future. This should be usable. It is not? Are you kidding me? I thought this only mountain was perfectly good to use, but no. Apparently we activated Heasy Base. Whoopsie doopsie. Silly me. Uh, we can still pretty easily get out of here, though. Uh, I think we even have a really straight shot towards the next Holy Mountain as well. And if we don't, I can just black hole our way there. I know jungle's good, because that was, at the bare minimum, was one of the ones that I used. Uh, I can just clear Heasy Base at this point. I would probably... I'm actually just going to destroy these guys, because I really do not want to have to deal with them later. I don't want to get Shrekt from off screen when I'm at one health trying to heal. That has happened a number of times. Not in this particular run, but it's happened. And I'd frankly rather not have to repeat it. Especially not in this run. Where at this point we've already unlocked a way to heal pretty much infinitely. Not even pretty much. We always, we know for certain we can heal infinitely. Using pretty much any of the spells at our, um... What, what's the word? Behest? Oh, I'm suffocating. Silly me. Producing way too much smoke. Uh, we need to get Ignite Gases if we're going to continue using this build. What, what's the word? Gas Igniter? It's called something like that. Removes gases from the area. Very useful to us. Right, this is the Holy Mountain that we can truly screw around with stuff in. Oh, yeah, time to make our Black Hole Wand more than just powerful. I mean, I don't even need more than one black hole, technically, but I'm going to add, like, 40 of them just so I can do something like, uh, where is it? Projectile. These are projectiles. That's 120 mana. You have enough mana to cast that, right? Yes, you do. Throw that on there. Uh, I guess I can put everything arc on there. There's so many things that I can do with this that just allow for more storage space, basically. Add a multicast that does pretty much nothing. We could do an increased lifetime, which would genuinely help it quite a lot. What? Okay. Freaking random. Yeah, I'm going to throw an increased lifetime on there. <laughs> I love the screen shake from that. It's awesome. Hi, buddy. Let's make ourselves like a little zone for wand summoning. It will be a pivotal part of this run here. Alright, we need to set up a Wand of Summoning. Which should be relatively easy, to be honest. We only need basically just Alpha and Summon Thyka Suava. Oh, right. Actually, that's fine. Um, I did not bring a weapon to destroy you with. And I really don't feel like kicking you to death. Give me one second. I'm sure I can make something. Do I have any ally destroyers in this room? I guess we can pair piercing or something with it. Uh, eventually they'll run out, but that's not the safest way of doing this. So let's heal up first. Eat the snow. Because you can do that in this game. Alright, full health. So what I'm going to do is switch a roo. I mean, we can just piercing shots. Damage plus. Interesting. So piercing does not make it damage these guys. Which is very confusing to me, but that's fine. I'm just going to blow him the frick up. Seriously, just detonate him. There we go. That's pretty much a guaranteed one shot. So what we can do is... I mean, like, summon them and then shoot. Or we could also have it summon a projectile that explodes at the same time when we get a decent enough wand. Whoa. Oh, I guess that one spawned on the floor and tried to pick up this. Where'd he go? 
There is no escaping me. Your statistics. Give them to me. Uh, wand homing is pretty terrible. As far as trash wands go, it is among the most trash. Or sorry, trash spells go, sorry. Let me just uh, summon this guy, why don't you? Get rid of that one. This is the most boring part of this process, I think. Or in my opinion, anyway. I really dislike having to farm wands. But it's pretty much necessary at this point, since we don't have many other better options. Or really any better options. Bro. He is dodging all of my attacks. I mean, I guess we can just summon a bunch of them, right? See what we can grab with this, and then, uh, you know. Bye-bye. Ooh, I missed. That definitely did not miss. We're just... Okay, we got... Whoa! Okay, hold on. That heavy shot's nuts. Uh, what do you have? Because always cast out mana is kind of meh. I'd prefer it on a much better st stat wand, but unfortunately that wand has some pretty abysmal stats. So, you know, we just gotta hope and pray, I guess. By the way, for those of you playing on this seed, you too can wand farm. You will not get the same stuff I do. It's never, ever going to be the exact same. But you will still get wands, and it is still probably the best way to locate spells that you need, since these spawn essentially any type of wand. If you're really lucky, you can even get something as absurd as an always cast uh, Circle of Vigor. Which is not going to happen. It's so incredibly unlikely, but you theoretically could. That heavy shot is such a nice spell to find. Because it's a really low cost, really high damage adding spell. Of which there are very few in this game, unsurprisingly. And you can negate it pretty much entirely. Hold on, I thought I saw a chainsaw. That's just a teleport wand. Or I guess that's just a the teleport wand. Because there really aren't any others. Nice shot. Oop, hey there. Screw off. You are my summons. I will destroy you. I love how completely insane. Holy crap, that is a storage wand and a half. And that's not useful in the slightest. I love destroying these guys. It's very, very, <laughs> like, time consuming. But it's funny, so who cares? That is actually a nice spell I just saw over there. Uh, let me set this aside. Actually, hold on. I don't even need to. I'm just gonna yoinky spoinky some of those spells. Uh, over here, there's a wand with an with some of the really nice spells that I want. Specifically, explosive projectile and damage field, which are very, very powerful damage adding spells. Uh, as for this thing, it, it's just got boomerang on it, which is a really nice spell to have, especially with healing projectiles. So we'll want to hold on to that, and its slot count is 24, which is almost the maximum that you can get with spawned wands from... I guess not really naturally spawned wands. Naturally spawned wands go up to 80 with a f with the fun game mechanic me bullcrapium. Uh, it is really hard to get that to happen. It, I believe the only time that's ever happened was in a nightmare run with a bunch of incredible luck. That guy, they'll, They're going through the wall. They're zooping. One of those probably had a super useful spell that I could have made use of, but, uh... Instead, I'm just gonna keep summoning them, and then we'll detonate them. Sometimes that happens. Uh, that is a good thing, because it means I don't have to do that. It basically just means a ghost couldn't spawn in, so it just died. Or, instead of dying, it just didn't exist at all. Something like that. Hey, you reduce recharge time. I think there's something between them. Oh, okay. Always add damage. Damage field. Explosive projectile. That is not explosive projectile. That is. And you have just a bunch of earthquake. So, now that we have two explosive projectiles, or we should, as long as I grabbed them correctly. Uh, yeah, okay. I put it over there instead of on another wand or something. Okay, that's a massive freaking bonus. Uh, we're gonna use this to store stuff, by the way. We're gonna want to store stuff that does not cause me too much harm, so preferably just mostly modifiers. <laughs> I'm also probably gonna need to make my teleport wand a 
high mana recharge rate uh, non-shuffle because we need to heal and store some stuff on it probably at the same time. Today is the wand building episode. It's like character building except for way more time consuming. You'd think it would be less time consuming since character building is, well, takes a lot of time, especially in TV shows or when you're making character for like Dungeons and Dragons, but no. Wand building sometimes takes more than that because of my incredibly terrible luck. Ooh, I didn't even mean to do that, but I got a good shot off. Protect that area teleport's really good. Not Probably not gonna use it for my build, but you know, it's here in our wand generation unit. Sorry, how the frick did you not get there? So much stuff that I will never make much use of. All right. Here we go. Summon a thousand wands. Hope we get an add of mana. But we probably won't. Because we already got an always cast. I wonder if they can suffocate. I guess, I'm probably guessing they can't. Not probably guessing, I'm guessing they can't. Because they're ghosts, and why would they program in freaking suffocation for ghosts of all things? Then again, it is Noita, so you never know, I guess. I saw another always, I think there was another always cast ad mana in here somewhere. I know I saw an ad mana. It is, the ex is that the exact same ad mana wand? Wait a minute. Did the randomness change on how these work? Because if this is the exact same stats, it is, it's the exact same wand. So that means we can, if we find a good enough spot, we can just infinitely farm the same spell. Holy crap. New unlimited mana, unlimited spell of particular type glitch just dropped, guys. I don't think that's something that I know, I knew about beforehand. I thought it was related to the frame and the specific, like, spell you ended up casting. Or maybe I just completely forgotten. I've m discovered this before, and I'm just dumb, which is completely possible. So uh, now we're going to summon them literally everywhere, because that corner over there is only going to give us the always cast one, which is not what I want. I need regular ad mana, darn it. Oh, goody. It's literally just spawning. They're literally just throwing them away now, which is great. Because I... I saw chainsaws. Yeah, we're gonna really want those chainsaws later. There's so many wands here that it's genuinely hard to tell what any of them have. I think I saw some reduced recharge times over there, which I really don't need. A light shot would be kind of nice. Blood mist might be helpful. Might be super helpful because the crit on bloody enemies. It just depends on what we end up building. I'm taking that light shot though, that's super good. Relatively low damage reduction for an incredible speed buff. Saw a lot of slime mist. What else was on that? Just slime mist? Dang. Uh, let's just see what we can get down here. Okay, well. Maybe I should just summon them without using a, like, spark bolt trigger. Um, yeah. Because that lets us better select where they summon in, no? Alright, my tiny armada has been made. Let's see what we got off of these corpses. I didn't see anything I was looking for. You two definitely don't have it. Flooding the holy mountain with wands? Why, yes, yes I am. Aren't you kids a little too young for this? Yes. Yes, we are. Oops, sorry. I accidentally cast the wrong spell. I meant not to heal you, but to harm you even greater than no before. And I healed myself somehow. Good. Sorry. Die. Thank you. I need to understand what all these wants have on them. I'm never going to figure out what that one had. It's just not happening. It's too poorly positioned. Uh, let's create another tunnel. We're gonna be probably making a couple of these. <laughs> the wand tunnels. 
in the great wand production of whatever freaking year it is. Because at this point, I think I'm starting to forget what time. Seriously, I've gone a little bit nuts from playing this game. But uh, it's fun. Fun when you get what you need, of course. But, you know, fun nonetheless. Summon ourselves some ghostly wand allies. We're very low chance to accidentally summon the same one twice because we're going to be constantly moving. And I'll change my positioning. Oh, you're in the wall! I mean, one of you isn't anymore, so I guess that helps you a little. Uh, would you all like to not be in the wall? I can free you. Though, it's probably not a great idea for me, but, um... I don't see why not. Yeah, I don't know why you all just move over with me sometimes. It is a little bit inconvenient. There's another piercing on there, which could be pretty useful. <laughs> Rainbow Glimmer, the funny spell. Oops, wrong wand. Also wrong wand. Come on. Don't throw me off of here, aim. All right. Any of you have an add mana for me? No. Okay. Well, I guess that's to be expected, but still. It's annoying. Summon some more wands, but this time directly above me, so that they're in a different position. Fun fact, this is genuinely the correct way to do this. It is a little bit annoying. Oh, you need to screw off. I am doing something here. I am a humble farmer, and you are intruding on my farming process. It is quite rude of you. Would you not say? Ah, the one ghosts are coming for me. I better run. I am glad that the projectile does not collide with them, so I don't need to fear actually getting hit by my own thing, as long as I don't aim even worse than normal. I'm sorry, did I see an ad mana, or was that my freaking idiocy kicking in again? It was my idiocy kicking in again. None of you have the spell I need. Seriously, why? Just give me ad mana. I keep thinking I'm seeing it, and then it's not actually there. <laughs> How many ghosts have to die before I get what is necessary to progress? Seriously, we cannot continue without that. Oh! Oh, frick yeah. Accidentally summoning them in the wall? I keep thinking I'm seeing an add mana over there, but I'm not. I'm clearly not seeing an add mana, right? There's there's no add mana on any of these, and if there was, it probably was grabbed by a ghost. No, there's not. I'm just stupid. Are there ghosts that are just not being visible right now? Because that is a possibility. It's happened in the past, and it will probably happen a lot in the future. Okay, would you two kindly move into a position that I could easily butcher you in? Guessing that's enough, but uh, I'm still going to try anyway. <laughs> Another- <gasps> We got it. The gremlin noises, of course, are necessary. Oh my gosh, there's another one. Let's frickin' go. We got two ad manas. Oh, yeah, let's go. It only took that many wands and figuring out that you can actually get the same wand over and over again if you try hard enough. Which means that if I go over here somewhere and there just so happens to be a weird, funny-looking uh, yellow wand, we're going to be duplicating that thing because I need ad mana so badly. Pixel by pixel, bit by bit, I will find where it spawned. I'm pretty sure we've summoned about a bazillion ghosts. Nope, it just spawned the one. Or two, I guess. Oopsie, wrong wand. Good thing I have nigh immortality. That's a joke, I really don't. Death is a constant fear for me, and as it should be, of course. Or just test- oh, I think I saw it. Some kind of- Nope, different wand. I, I thought it was over here somewhere. 
which we can test by, look, over here, if I summon it right on top of this one, it just repeatedly makes it that same wand, as long as we actually summon it in the same position, which does not always happen, but when it does, it's the same wand. Which means I can abuse this for more ad manas, you see. Deadly heal is not ad mana. Yeah, all right, that's enough of this. I, I'm gonna stop in a couple seconds. I, I ran out of patience very, very effect effectively. I'm very good at that. All right, enough of this. I grow tired of my confines. Let us return to our previous objective. Now, would you say that digging blast is useful in this working environment? Because I would say that laser beams constantly surrounding me is far more so. What would you say, internet? Permanent laser beam? Or no? Permanent laser beam. As for the healing stuff, bullcrepium, I think we can just do this. That's all the wands I need. Uh, if we want to get through parallel worlds, I think it's just this. Alright. Yeah, that launches fast enough. <laughs> Voice cracked initially, so I decided to just go with it. Very funny and comedic indeed. Uh, let's just dump a bunch of stuff on here that can't possibly get me killed. Actually, heavy shot on this wand can, so let's not do that. But most of these spells that I want to put on here should not be able to harm me. As a wise man once said, damaging yourself is damaging your future. I don't think any wise men actually said that, but it sounds interesting and makes sense. So uh, let's pretend that they did. Side note. If you do that and then just have this here, and, uh, you know, move this to the inventory because it's potentially deadly. Move these down here because they cannot hurt me. Uh, we'll, we'll probably want to put, like, what, what, what modifiers are there? Uh, I guess this has null shot, so it won't be a problem pretty much no matter what. Uh, just to be on the safe side. I can throw homing on there. That'll keep me fine. Um, I don't have a teleport wand, which is fine. I can make this a teleport wand. I think the correct way to do that is teleport at mana double cast. I don't need this cast here. Or for that matter, this double cast here. So you'd want to do that. We can move the homing and this down there, put that back up there. Healing bolt's fine on here. I don't know why it wasn't there in the first place. Uh, Sigma should be safe to put on this wand as long as I don't put dangerous spells on it. Probably don't want to keep that up there, or down here, because Explosive Spell can hurt you, just only a little bit. Okay, um, so something like this should be okay. Ah, uh, well, that's 60 mana, 140 mana, never mind. If only I could, like, teleport faster. Well, it works perfectly as a healing wand, so... I mean, if I could do just, like, this... ...and make it a little bit faster, that would also work probably fine. Since we have Limitless Laser Beam already. Uh, actually, I wonder if I could increase life... Ah, uh, whatever. Well, we can try that later. We have a weapon. It's strong enough. Although, I would really like it to be a ranged weapon. It's fine. I'm going to make this a crit weapon, actually. Since I more than have the resources to do that now. Now it's guaranteed crit every single hit. Do I even need the speed up on there? Like, actually? I, I don't think so. I need to make the delay between this, like, zero, which I think I can do with piercing chainsaw bullcrap. Which is always a fun sentence. I 
No, we had a chainsaw wand over here somewhere. Question is if I can find it. There we go, that was easy peasy squamming lazy. Okay, so it should just be... Yeah, that's, that's a decent one since it just automatically is going to heal me. Uh, until we get better stats, I guess, on some of our stuff, it's going to be kind of crappy, but that's what we have right now. Honestly, not the worst. Uh, I think we can look around for to see if we can find better wands, too, since I'm guessing some of these actually have pretty decent stats. The wand ghosts sometimes have surprisingly good ability and stat modifiers, so it can be worth checking them out. This guy kind of sucks. We need something with higher capacity. Or, I would prefer something with higher capacity. We don't need it. It would just be really awesome. Uh, we could check out Wandmart. I'm saying, I'm thinking we should probably just go straight to a parallel world if we can. Especially considering we have good healing and infinite digging and uh, Ambrosia on hand, which should protect us from the worst parts of it. But... Considering our weapon and our teleport, we might want to just deal with Master of Masters first. Because wand editing everywhere is just so powerful. I'm going to make it to the surface first, and then we can decide from there. I guess we could, like, gather max HP increases. Oh my gosh, that black hole is disgusting. Disgusting. It's so good. One of the best black hole builds I have ever, ever used. Now if we could just combine that with a teleport somehow. We have electricity immunity, so I don't need to fear that very much. Uh, I do need to play carefully though, because I may be powerful. I am l much less than a mortal. We have... A long way to go to reach that. Thankfully, we do have good damage. Oh. Yeah, casting this wand should just be safe pretty much always. I have tried to make sure of that. I freaking love this build. It's so terribly mediocre. Go over here, because the orb. <laughs> oh, I love doing that. It's so dumb. Uh, this doesn't pierce into the lava lake, does it? Actually, if it does, that's fine. I really couldn't care less, because we have a freezy ball. No, it doesn't. Okay. <laughs> I love how fast this goes. Nyom. 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 Also, we can just eat the entire lava lake with this, can't we? Because it just goes, it eats through lava. It freezes it and then destroys it. Yeah. So, if you ever need a tool to dig through lava, uh, call me. <laughs> I've got one. Black hole plus freeze charge. Very good combo. Sometimes I just like doing stupid stuff. I don't even need to switch off and on again, because this wand is perfectly built for this. Heck yeah, draining the lava lake. This entire episode is just me building wands for like half an hour. And honestly, it's not even bad for me anyway. Loved doing this one. Let's say hi to the fishes, because there's multiple species of them there, so I think that's how that works. And then, I guess let's go beat up the Pyramid Boss, because he's really easy, and especially with our current setup. Freaking love all the crap I can do with this power. I'm also real glad we got this freaking wand set up, because it is so mediocre. Like, you would think it would be much harder to set up anything, but at least we can do something. If this were any other seed, I don't think I would have the opportunity to make these disgusting builds, but they are just so good. 
Like, I, do you ever freaking use, like, deadly heal? I wouldn't think so, because you it has deadly in the name, right? You're like, oh, well, I'm not going to use that crap. But it's actually such an overpowered healing spell, especially with Null Shot, which I guess means that it's not overpowered, but reasonably so, because it's available and usable most effectively with Null Shot and Piercing. And best part is... Piercing and Null Shot were both introduced in the same update as Deadly Heal. They were intended to be used together. Or, I'm guessing that it was likely that that was the case. Or, is the case. I love critting every single pit point of damage. It is so awesome. I also love healing. Open your shell, dum-dum. So I can rip your face to shreds that easily. Alright, Nala, top tier spell. Always want to have that on hand. And a pretty yucky tier wand. Oh! That's not yucky tier. That's really good. <laughs> that is an absurd mana recharge rate. I'd love to use that. But I'd rather not right now. Because it'll take way too long for me to set up, and I am not prepared to do that. We could check Sky Shop, but we don't have the cash, so we might as well head towards, uh... I mean, do the key quest on our way, obviously, but... Heading toward the Coral Chest isn't a bad idea. Since if we go up around there, there's also the Gold Room. I'll end at- we'll do some Gold Room crap, and then we can end there. By the way, Watchtower, very fun structure. I'm so glad this was added in the update. Beta patch technically isn't beta patch anymore. Love this music, it's so good. So there is so much fun crap that you have access to with teleportation. So much fun crap that I know how to access to. Always a good experience when you manage to figure out a good run. Alchemist is always a top priority. Now let me show you guys a really neat little secret. And by secret, I of course mean intentional feature. So, when the world generates, it always generates these extremely dense rock walls with the exact same pattern. If you scale up to this one right here, it makes a perfect little, like, this shape. You can just dig straight from here, whether you want to use Catapolymorphin to turn into a worm or something more reasonable. Um, it leads straight into the gold room, just instantly. It's at the very, very bottom of it, too, so it's just easy access. Very, very good way to get all your gold at once. You know, they say not to count your gold until it hatches, but uh, I'm pretty sure that was in relation to chickens and uh, not gold. Alright. <laughs> they say not to count your gold before it hatches. Wait a minute. I love mismatching quotes. It's really fun. I don't even remember what the terminology behind that is, but it's it's funny, so... I enjoy doing it, smiley face. One of the best parts is collecting all the gold in this room for the first time. Because when you first experience this, you just it, it just feels amazing. Because in Noite, you're always pressed for money early on. And you need it in order to re-roll perks and buy wands and spells. And then you just figure out about this room, or whether you use the internet or find it yourself somehow. And you discover it's filled with over 200,000, 250,000, to be more specific, gold. So much money that you could literally swim in it. You know, if it was more liquid-like and wouldn't be like a solid surface when combined together. Which, uh, the unfortunate reality about owning this much gold is it wouldn't be liquid-like. <laughs> As uh, Noita makes it seem to appear as gas-like, almost. For if it were more liquid-like, it would, um... You'd be able to actually swim through it, but you cannot. But hey, it's still really cool, so I'm not complaining. It's also blindingly bright after a few seconds. Also, if you off-screen it and then come back and reload the screen, it looks beautiful. It's 
very wonderful thing. But yeah, Golden Noita is really pretty. If you run off screen a bunch and then come back, it looks really cool. Let me actually do that real quick for the funny. We run off screen quite a bit, and then now we should be good. Nope, it decided not to. Come on, game. We're gonna encounter the wall if we're not too careful. Literally right there. I really don't feel like doing parallel worlds today. I'm glad we got set up for them today. I don't think I have the patience to do them. Okay, why did you not reset into the pretty shiny gold that you should have? This area reset its texture, weirdly enough, and that's what it's supposed to look like all throughout. And it's really, really beautiful when you get it all to work together. Unfortunately, it decided not to do that, so uh, we just gotta collect all this the normal way. Boo hoo. Wham wham. I guess we can try going all the way out here. And then up. The cloudscape. Well, probably not into the cloudscape, but you know, around it. Because I really like looking at the pretty gold texture for a couple of seconds at least. Okay, that really feels like it should have been far enough. If it is not, I will be a little bit sad. I went up too high. Boomerang is a very useful spell. Especially for healing. Hey, it did it! Look how pretty that is. Oh, so beautiful. Just look at that gold texture, man. Can't wait when I get good enough at Earth to do stuff that's just as good as this. You've seen, you can see in some of the thumbnails how I attempt to draw, like, gold in Noita. It is so hard to do, though, because it is very brightly colored most of the time. And unfortunately, I am terrible at coloration. To be fair, I'm using MS Paint, which is a mediocre piece of software, but, you know, it's... it's something. We're Bob the Builder today, building our wands and crap. Man, this has been a really fun episode. Just gotta collect some gold to chill out, do crap for fun. It lasted a pretty long while, but I think I commentated throughout enough of it that I don't need to edit this. And to be fair, I didn't plan on it anyway, since uh, that's pretty much how we're gonna be doing the final 600. Almost unedited of me constantly ranting about random bullcrap. On next episode, Context talks about Minecraft lore again. Which is uh, not actually impossible, because there's a decent chance that I think of something else interesting about the lore of Minecraft and its world before then. But, uh, yeah, gold collection, the fun part of this. Love that little jingly noise, it's so nice. Probably shouldn't be trying to burn my eyes out, but, uh, you know, it's really pretty, so I don't care. So beautiful. Noita is like one of the most pretty games I have ever seen. Th to be fair, I am incredibly biased in this. Biased in this because I have way too much love for this game. Uh, seriously, the like the only issues I take with it are its initial starting difficulty for a player to become able to even get through the first few stages, which, by the way, isn't the worst. It's just bad sometimes. Although, uh, it certainly can suck. Which I have experienced myself and remember. Which is why it feels so amazing now that I'm not as bad at it anymore. It's just an amazing game, in my opinion. If, uh, if people- if other people know more of the flaws, uh, please do tell, because I am terrible at looking for them. I am super biased when it comes to this game. I guess the secrets are a little bit tough to decipher sometimes, but to be honest, the internet exists nowadays, which I guess is nice, but it's really awesome to decipher hidden secrets yourself, which is one of the main reasons why I like Noita so much, because it contains so many intricate and tiny little secrets in it, and it's also another reason why I've been trying to go into games more blind nowadays. I used to just look up everything 
uh, I now try to play through most of it without looking up anything, and then I look up a single thing, and then I can't stop looking stuff up because I'm like, <sighs> and I get lazy, which happened with Baldur's Gate 3 with for me. Uh, I ended up being like, oh well, how can I save every character? Or oh, I want I want to know what uh, what what to do in this area because I'm lazy and I don't feel like wasting 40 more hours searching the same location for something else. Because uh, I really don't feel like spending 40 hours searching the exact same location for something that I slightly missed. And uh, unfortunately, I messed up and missed some of the stuff, which is fine, because subsequent playthroughs exist. But unfortunately, I'm playing on the, the, you know, the higher difficulties, so it's not particularly easy to do. Uh, here, let's, let's just go down over here. It's not very easy to continue going. I've done a lot of saves and reloads. I w I'm planning on doing honor mode, the highest difficulty, eventually. I mean, like, I have a basic save file set up for it that I plan on using. I might end up just deleting it so that I can make another character for it, because I might do that. It might be fun. It might be cool to play an origin character, but I don't really want to, because I like making up my own bullcrap. Something that I really enjoy doing. Uh, I should really talk about the D&D campaign that I was going- that I'm going to run, or at least the world of it, because it's a really interesting one, in my opinion. Uh, I, I'll probably look at that a little bit, maybe, in the next episode. We'll see. I'll, I'll probably talk about some of the world-building crap that I've done in the past. Because there are a couple of worlds that I want to talk about that I just don't get the chance to. And, well, this is a commentary channel, so I might as well give myself something to talk about. <laughs> Alright, folks. I think I'm going to make myself a little space here for the for Mina to sleep. For me to sleep in. Haha, <laughs> Finnish. Language. Mm. And by sleep in, I of course mean just, like, you know, have a nice looking outro. Because I'd actually really like to just be able to see the background when I'm escaping into the parallel universes, no? It's an interesting experience. I should really talk about Noita lore, because there's a little bit of it there that I could really mention. It's not a huge amount of stuff. It focuses more on the secrets and actual gameplay part of it, which I like about the game. But it does have some lore in it, and it is pretty interesting to look into. So maybe I'll look at that. I don't know, commenters. You decide. I mean, not really, but I'll take your input. You don't have the final decision, but uh, if enough people request it, I will just look at something. Because there is some stuff that I would like to check out with Noithalor. I know people understand quite a few things about it already, like... A player character is technically the player themselves, or an embodiment of them, or something something they gave up their free will so that the player themselves can control them. Anyway, blah blah blah, I'll talk about that all next time if you all would prefer that over the weird world building crap. Either way, Thank you so much for watching. I know this one didn't focus too much on the actual major parts of it, but really when it comes to doing a god run, there's not many other options than setting it up throughout the experience. So, you know, this is a great way for people to look at it and see how it is accomplished sometimes, because it can be a grueling process. Uh, anyway, thank you all so much for watching. If you did, because this one is probably a little bit more boring than normal, but, you know, it was, it was still fun for me. And, uh, you know, most importantly, have an absolutely nice day. Bye!